Time for the market report. Zach Ashmore in studio with a slightly abbreviated version of this month's supply and demand report. Zach? Thanks, Mike. Markets down this week reflecting new information, namely the WASDE report. We'll take a closer look into that in a bit, but first, the numbers. This week's biggest loss, besides lumber tumbling down in price, this time a dramatic $225. Soybeans also down 75 and a quarter cents. Last week's biggest gain, cotton up about two cents. Live cattle and corn also up nearly two cents as well. This month's WASDE report dropped last week, and as you saw, it had a big effect on the markets. Looks like supplies were a reason for that. We had more available than anticipated, which means prices had to adjust. Let's take a closer look. U.S. wheat production up from last month by 26 million bushels. Stocks lower due to exports. Feed and residual use up, and projected season average farm price $6.50 per bushel. Global wheat supplies expected to rise 4.3 million tons. World consumption raised 2.4 million tons due to higher feed and residual use by the EU and Russia. U.S. corn stocks down due to increased use for ethanol and exports. Ethanol use nearly back to pre-COVID levels. Exports up due to demand despite higher prices. Global corn production lowered. Brazil's crop lowered due to below normal rainfall in the center west and south during the month of May, ending stocks raised from higher production in Pakistan and South Africa. U.S. rice changes mostly due to trade. Higher exports but lower imports mean lower stocks. All rice season average farm price $14.20 per hundred weight. Global rice supplies higher due to India's increased production. With that also comes higher consumption. World ending stocks raised 0.4 million tons, with China accounting 65 percent of the total. U.S. soybeans showing higher stocks overall. That's due to lower crush based on lower forecast for soybean mill domestic disappearance and higher soybean mill imports. Global soybean production up, mostly in Brazil, meaning higher stocks overall. U.S. livestock showing slightly higher beef production, lower pork production, and both broiler and turkey production up as well. Cattle, hog, and turkey prices are raised. Egg and milk production also up. Beef import forecasts raised for 2021 and 2022 on expected strength and demand from Asian markets. U.S. cotton shows a 100,000 bale increase in exports from last month. Upland cotton farm price for 2021 and 22 unchanged at 75 cents per pound, while the 2020 and 2021 prices reduced one cent to 67 cents per pound. Global cotton supplies down due to higher consumption and use while production lowered. World trade is 1.1 million bales higher with increased imports for China, Bangladesh, and Turkey. So despite the drop in soybeans and wheat, by far less than they've risen recently, by the way, corn rising, albeit by only a little. Market analyst Sue Martin says that contrary the, to the numbers we've seen, what we're looking at is a bull market for grains, and traders this past week were simply hedging themselves for the future. To explain more, here's Sue. When you look at in the U.S., we had on this report ending stocks domestically drop in corn. They dropped in wheat, all wheat, basically, for 2020, 2021. And then they also dropped in rice and in feed grains. When you get all four of those on the same path or the same um, ledge or whatever you want to call it, you're in a bull market. Um, the one thing is you'll play tag, which we seem to be doing. But then you look at the global scale. And the only one out of all of those, well, I guess two, feed grains and corn, managed to see stocks drop. When you look at corn, it's fighting soybeans, which the report was not bullish on. And then you look at wheat, and it wasn't real special there. So I think the market said, you know, we came up, we got fairly close. I think 28 and a quarter was the high on um, December corn. The high before that is 38 eight and a quarter. So you got fairly close. I think the market decided to uh, take in some profit taking for the weekend and they stepped aside. And that's it for a deeper look into the markets. Based on what we're seeing, looks like supply is pretty good for now. Planning pretty much done. Growing season is on us now. Let's hope weather doesn't take a bad turn and keep stocks tight.